on your marks, get set, invest. You've done your research, you've identified a share or a fund that you're excited about, and you've worked out how much money you want to put in. In a nutshell, you should aim to invest enough that it would make a healthy difference to your portfolio if it rose strongly, but not invest so much that it would seriously damage your overall portfolio of investments if the share price crashed. Diversifying your investments usually means having at least 10 to 20 different investments in total. If you have a pension, then you'll be able to choose certain funds and other investments through your pension provider's platform. But otherwise, you'll need to open an account with an investment platform. The most important thing is to choose a platform that's registered with the Financial Conduct Authority and covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. This means that if the firm goes bust, you're eligible for up to £85,000 of your investment money back. And for that reason, if you're a high roller, then try not to invest more than £85,000 with any one particular investment platform. Making sure the platform is registered with the Financial Conduct Authority is also the best way to ensure that you're not signing up with a scam company who will steal your money. As we've seen in earlier episodes, you can avoid paying tax on your profits by opening a Stocks and Shares ISA. Every year, you're allowed to add thousands of pounds to your balance. We're using the example of an ISA account here because it's a good, general, tax-efficient way of investing. There are other accounts for children and also SIP accounts for managing your own pension. There are also ordinary dealing accounts which don't have the ISA's tax benefits. These will all be explained on your platform. Now, you'll need your bank details to pay in some of your money and your national insurance number too. You don't need to start investing immediately though, you can just leave your money in the account, but bear in mind it probably won't earn you any interest there. Make sure you check what the fees are for your account, that's particularly important. You can start investing by searching on the website or app for the share or fund that you're interested in. Usually you can search by name, or by ticker, which are three or four letter shortcuts to find a particular investment. Some funds aren't listed on the stock market, so if you want one of those, then you need to make sure that the platform you choose offers those kinds of funds. For stock market investments, you'll be shown a buy price and a sell price, also known as offer and bid price or ask and bid price. Yes, I know it can be a bit confusing at first, but you'll get used to it. Basically, the buy price is the lowest price that you're allowed to pay for each individual share of the investment. It's called the offer or the ask because whenever you buy a share, you're buying it from someone else who's offering it to you at their asking price. Okay, so let's say you want to buy a thousand pounds worth of meme pot shares at ten pounds per share. The platform may allow you to just say, I want a thousand quids worth of meme pot, and then they'll work out the number of shares you need to buy, or the platform may require you to calculate the number of shares yourself, which in this case is simply one thousand pounds divided by ten pounds, that's a hundred shares. Now, you'll notice that if you want to sell those shares again, then you'll have to sell them at the current sell or bid price, which is only £9.80 per share. The two prices are different because the people who make sure that there are usually lots of shares available to buy and sell have to take a bit of a cut for their efforts. These people are called market makers. The bigger a company is, the more buying and selling of its shares there usually is. And you'll notice that the buy and sell prices are usually very close together. While for smaller companies, you often get a big gap between the two, which can represent a significant cost of investing. For instance, if there's a 10% difference between the buy and sell prices for a share, then the moment you buy, you're already sitting on a 10% loss compared to the price that you could sell them for. So you need to be pretty confident that your little company is going to have a significant price rise. In addition, there's usually a platform fee for buying the shares, averaging somewhere around £10 per deal. Once you've bought some shares, you're a shareholder, a part owner of the company, which means you have the right to vote on important company issues at the annual general meeting. Most major investment platforms allow you to do this online, and sometimes you can attend the company meeting either online or in person and actually vote there. When you've bought some investments, you can view them in the portfolio section of your platform, which usually shows you how much profit you've made on each investment in both percentage and absolute terms. And it will also show you the overall profit or loss for the portfolio as a whole. 
A lot of investment platforms also have a very useful demo account feature. This allows you to practice investing with pretend money. You can buy a bunch of shares and funds and then just see how they perform over time without actually risking your real money. It's a really good way to get used to the process. Now, there are a few unusual events that you need to be aware of, just in case they affect one of your shares or funds. Firstly, your fund might close down if the fund manager decides not to continue its operation. In that case, you may not need to actually take any action, as your investment plus any profits will be paid back into your account when the fund closes. One of your shares might have what we call a corporate action, which your platform will notify you about. For starters, they'll always let you know when the latest dividend is going to be paid into your account, usually twice a year. And if you're really, really lucky, your company may be taken over by another company at a premium price. What typically happens is another company offers the shareholders more than the shares are currently worth on the market, and then the shareholders all take a vote on whether to accept the offer. Sometimes they turn it down if they think the offer isn't good enough and they hold out for an even better offer. But quite often they accept it, and I love it when this happens. And I get a lovely windfall, and I can take my profits and then invest them in something else. Your investment platform will sometimes allow you to take part in initial public offerings, or IPOs. This is when a private company decides to raise money by going public, sometimes called floating on the market. This means the company sells shares to investors. This is the beginning of it trading on the stock market. A private company called MemePot Limited, for example, becomes MemePot PLC, a public limited company. Lots of investors like IPOs because they get to buy new shares early at a fixed price and they anticipate a price boost when the shares hit the open market. But warning, this doesn't always happen. Sometimes you find yourself with an immediate profit, sometimes a loss. It can be really hard to predict which will happen. And so you need to be mindful that IPOs can be high risk. OK, I bet you're just dying now to get your hands dirty and start investing. How about a trial run before you do it for real? So, are you ready to invest then?